Hello, I'm Joe Seckel. I'm a uh, principal server architect uh, with uh, Dell servers and uh, distinguished engineer. And what uh, I want to talk about today was our for you uh, concept and, and in this case product. Uh, this one happens to be codenamed Zeus, but it will be powered C8000. And really wanted to kind of talk about how we came up with this as a, uh, as a, as a platform concept and what drove that. So I guess the, the way to approach that topic is to first go back to the correlation or linkage between PowerHC and our DCS custom business. And in our DCS custom business, we had a need to create a new platform paradigm that would uh, enable us to be more responsive to um, real-time customer needs and by giving us a flexible building block type solution, but yet uh, in, in a manageable chunk size. Chunk size, and when I say chunk size, I mean, you know, certainly in terms of the the amount of use space it consumed in a rack, but it also on the depth. Now, in in DCS, we came up with a product we code named Scorpion, and uh, the idea there was to create a, uh, a, a a chassis sled franchise around vertical sleds, and we had the concept of a single wide sled. Uh, or we had the concept of a double wide sled, and as obvious, the double wide is twice as wide as the single wide. And therefore, uh, depending on what flavor of uh, IT gear, you know, in terms of compute, how many how many drives you needed directly attached to that compute, you could kind of trade off, or with customers, we could trade off kind of the density, if you will versus what the configuration of that sled might be. Uh, the popular was re that, that concept, that product uh, concept was received quite well with our DCS customers, so we looked to extend that and leverage kind of best of breed into the powered C line. And so that's how we came up with Zeus. And Zeus, uh, very similar to Scorpion, the big difference is depth. Uh, we needed to be a little bit more sensitive to a wider variety of rack environments, uh, some with rear doors, some not, uh, but, but uh, what we wanted to stay closer to is kind of the 30, 32-ish uh, inch depth of, of overall chassis. So what, uh, what Zeus fundamentally is then is, is again, it's, it's a 4U uh, chassis and we really wanted to hone in on providing maximum flexibility. Uh, one thing in, in terms of doing uh, server architectures is this front space is, is kind of the prime real estate. And so the question is how do you uh, divvy up that prime real estate based on uh, density requirements uh, and based on configuration requirements on, on a per node basis. And we decided that we wanted to, again, offer customers a way to either uh, maximize their compute density, especially where they didn't need a lot of uh, direct attached drives or perhaps where they could live with buried direct attached drives, versus um, where customers absolutely needed to have uh, hot plug capability for their spindles. And so we created different sled types. So probably the most basic sled type is a single wide compute. And a single wide compute has uh, our two socket motherboard. In this case, this is a uh, Sandy Bridge GP board. And then uh, you can kind of see under this uh, little protective cover, we have a couple of uh, two and a half inch drives. And the two and a half inch drives made into a little board that uh, then attaches to the controller that's either on the motherboard or one that you might plug into a PCI Express uh, slot. This, each one of these sleds makes a connection into a mid-plane and the mid-plane has really two responsibilities. It, it distributes power to each of the sleds and also some control signaling based on I2C and uh, 10100 uh, management traffic. Uh, Ethernet management traffic. So this is a, a single wide compute sled. Uh, it's it's probably a um, type of sled that more of an HPC type account where you don't necessarily need uh, a lot of local spindles, but uh, you, you obviously need to have full full capability in terms of your compute.
that slides right back into one of these 10 single wide locations. The next thing I want to talk about is a double wide compute sled. Double wide compute sled uh, has a couple of interesting features, especially with respect to the hard drives or, or um, um, drives in general. Now, in this portion of the sled is still that same motherboard that you saw in the single wide compute. But what we've added to this sled that obviously adds the second, uh, second width, if you will, is you have the ability to have a couple of two and a half inch hot plug spindles out the front. All right. Um, you have, since you're now in a, a wider space, you can add in additional PCIe card and these would be the cutouts for the PCIe card bracket. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, uh, put in drives that are not hot pluggable, yet they're in a uh, very simple carrier such that you can very quickly swap them out once you pull the sled out and disengage it, it's as opposed to <coughs> needing to unscrew a bunch of screws and disconnecting cables. Those drives leverage kind of a quick disconnect uh, backplane style of connection but again they're not hot pluggable in that the, the, the sled is out so obviously the power is not applied to the sled but very quick service and then you still of course in the back have the two buried two and a half inch drives um, and then like all the other sleds you make that uh, power and control connection back into that mid plane so this is a double wide compute with two front hot plug two and a half inch drives Uh, one of the other things that we can do with this is uh, we've had one of our HPC type customers who wanted to put uh, a couple of uh, GPU, GPU, GP, GPU style accelerators in, <coughs> and so we've we've uh, done that with this upper portion of the or this this additional portion of the sled. So again, this is a double wide compute, the same motherboard, but now you have a couple of GP, GPUs in this sled that tie directly to the PCIe of that motherboard. And then I mentioned that some customers may want to trade off density here in favor of having hot plug drive capability. So we've come up with a kind of a sled within a sled concept where <clears throat> we have a portion of the sled that stays uh, static and this is where you make your SAS connections. Behind these SAS connections we have SAS expanders that will take the external SAS coming in and route those accordingly to the uh, individual drives within this. We have 12 hot plug sleds. Um, these are, in this case, three and a half inch sleds. We have the ability to put two and a half inches in, in there as well. The uh, drives have um, the ability to have uh, LEDs that associate the activity and the status. So for example, in the front of each of these hot plug sleds, there will be a, a status and an activity LED. Uh, can't quite see it in there, but it's, it's buried in there and it'll, it'll light accordingly if this particular sled and the, all, the, all the sleds that you're looking at has an issue. Uh, then a service person would go off, pull that sled out, and then on a the side of the sled on both sides, you can see there are also little holes under the drives that, uh, again, for each individual drive will give you the status and uh, the activity so that you know you're, you're pulling out the uh, correct, correct drive. All right. So that is the hot plug sled. Uh, again, 12 drives arranged as two rows of six. And that's, uh, that's kind of the sled uh, franchise that we have for this uh, platform. Now again, idea here is flexibility. We can mix and match these, fled, these sleds uh, according to customer need. Um, and that's, uh, that's about it. Now on the back side, if we turn this around, which is always a task, the, what we were architecturally going for is uh, we wanted to build an, a casing that was about as simple and straightforward as taking a, a chunk of rectangular air conditioning duct. And we wanted that to be extremely passive, something that you could bolt into a rack and never have to remove, um, and then basically have 
all of your node and cables and drives and everything else accessed out the front. And then in the rear, very simply, we wanted to have a very minimal uh, need to come back to the hot aisle and, and service this. So one couple of things that are here in the back that might be serviced, I mean, notice that we have the, the uh, four AC plugs that go in. Uh, this chassis can support uh, running off a of grid A and a grid B. So if a customer wants to have a, a failover uh, power grid scenario, that, that can be sort ported directly with the four AC plugs that go in the back here. As far as servicing the fans, very easy, toolless. And the fans come out like so. I mean, the, the, the equipment continues to run. We have little louver doors that, that will uh, maintain some pressurization so that we don't get too much leakage through, the, through this gap. And you know, we can still keep things running cool inside. We have uh, dual fans. So again, we have three by two, so a total of six fans. Uh, provide for fan redundancy for just about any uh, configuration we, we have here. Um, the fans go back in, and then the other thing that we have that is uh, accessible to the rear from a serviceability standpoint is our uh, little chassis control or fan control board. And again, toolless, real simple. Uh, when this is out and the, and, and the box is still running, all the fans will spin up to max uh, max speed. But this uh, this is this is really the only thing in the back that you'd ever have to service. Now the the from a uh, out of band management connection standpoint, down here and line this up right. You can consolidate. Let's say you have ten compute single wide sleds. Uh, instead of making individual 10-100 out-of-band LAN connections for management to each one, you can consolidate all that traffic on that little board. There was a little switch, a little Ethernet, 10-100 Ethernet switch, and you can consolidate all that traffic to one, one uplink. Uh, otherwise, spin back to the front here. Get my exercise for We also have an uplink uh, here on the mounting ear, so you can kind of pick which way you want to come off with that consolidated out-of-band LAN link. Uh, the other thing to point out is, I guess, how we power this box. And we have our power supply sled. And what we've taken is two very industry standard 1400 watt supplies. And we've arranged them such that uh, we can put two in a single wide. And in fact, back to that comment I made about being able to handle both an A and a B grid feed, we could sacrifice this single wide and have two power sleds. So it's kind of a one plus one at roughly 28 or so, 28 or so hundred watts. Um, and, and then, and again, you could, uh, if, you, if you had um, a supply go down, you need to service a sled for whatever reason, you have a second sled in there and it continues to run the, run the rest of the system. So that's, that's kind of the, what we call our Zeus uh, architecture. Um, we think uh, it'll do well. Hopefully everyone else will like it. <laughs>